Hello YouTube, I have a very special treat for you today. A nice little snack that you can just suck on and enjoy as you watch today's video. When I'm recording this, today is Victoria Day in Canada. That is a holiday. That is a day I don't have to be at the office. So I've decided to take a little bit of extra time today and talk about Shine freaking Greymon. Shine Greymon. This card. Hello, Shine Greymon. Shine Greymon is a very good card. Uh, the deck since BC12 support came out, is very strong. And it's only going to get better in EX4. It's only going to get better in Ultimate Cup format. It's only going to get way, 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 way better in BT13. So I've been playing Shine Greymon, and uh, Shine Greymon is really fun. I'm prepping for BT13 already, and the deck, it just it, it, it's silly what I can do already. It's absolutely insane what it's going to do in a couple sets. So what's going to make this video so special, eh? What can I do in this Shine Greymon video to really tickle you in your funny place? Well, I have two Shine Greymon decks that I've been piloting. Both of them are over 75% win rate on the meta. And the meta, as you know, is Beelzemon. Uh, but also Red Hybrid, also Greymon decks, uh, and a couple other hunters. And 75% uh, win rate on both versions of Shine Greymon. It's not even BT13 yet. I'm going to do a double deck profile. Two! That's like one plus one. That's like two. Oh my god. We're doing two deck profiles today. Two different ways you can play Shine Greymon on BT12. And uh, then we'll do talk about some combos and some strategy after. So this is going to be a packed video. But, you know, as that one singer says, shine bright like a diamond. And that's what Shine Greymon does. And Marcus just punches people in the face. That's really cool. So, hope you guys enjoy the two deck profiles today. Let me know what you think about this type of video in the comments. If you like this kind of stuff, let me know and I'll make more. Probably. Please like, comment, subscribe to the notification button, smash potatoes. That way you know when old these and the Digimon videos do come out and enjoy the show, guys. So I'm starting off with the yellow base of Shine Green one. And the yellow base runs four Coromon from BT12. Has an inheritable that says when one of your yellow or red tamers comes suspended, one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 1000 DP for the turn. Now, some of you might think that this egg seems kind of lackluster compared to other yellow eggs that exist. And you would be correct. This egg does feel lackluster compared to other yellow eggs that exist. However, we have to play it because our first rookie, four copies of BT12 Agumon. BT12 Agumon, if you notice, regularly costs one for Evolve. But cost zero for a ton of Coromon. So what does that mean? It means you have to run the Coromon. Uh, and that Coromon is the best Coromon we have. That's yellow. So, gotta deal with it. Gotta move on with it. And so the non-play effect, if you decide to play it, where you reveal top four cards of your deck, you add a card Greymon in his name, and a Marcus Damon into your hand, and a bomb at the rest. It's like the other Agumon you have in BT12, so that's pretty cool. And then the Inheritable here is the same as Coromon, but it's minus 2,000 instead of 1,000. So now all of a sudden, if you build that stack, you can do minus 3,000 to something. That's a little more, you know, manageable. It's actually not too terrible. Um, as long as you get that stack going, you're probably okay. The other rookie we play in this deck is four copies of BT2 Agumon. Yeah, you haven't seen this card in a hot minute, have you? I'll talk about why we're playing him in a second, but he has an inheritable that says when attacking, get three or more yellow tamers in play, draw a card. That's actually not bad. Draw power is cool. I actually don't mind this yellow Agumon. Now, uh, he's, a, he's a yellow Agumon, right? But he's a dinosaur. Just like the other Agumon before, it is a dinosaur. That matters, because we are running four copies of Geo Greymon. Geo Greymon usually costs three to evolve, but you can evolve two on an Agumon with dinosaur trait. Agumon in the name with dinosaur trait. So if we played a regular Agumon that's not a dinosaur, it would cost three. So we gotta play those Agumons because they cost two. Make it cost two. It's important. And when this guy digivolves, you play a Marcus from your hand for free if you don't have a Marcus on the field already. The card's pretty good. Plays your Marcus for free. Who doesn't love that? It's inheritable, the same as the BT12 Agumon. Another minus 2,000 when your yellow and red hammer gets suspended once per turn. Not bad. Pretty okay. Now, what makes my build of yellow Shine Green 1 yellow base really special is that I'm playing hybrids. Because we love yellow hybrid in this grill. We are playing the nine copies of the yellow hybrids. We're doing this because it allows us to play yellow hybrid Shine Green one. And the deck's actually kind of scary because it can randomly OTK your opponent out of nowhere. It can randomly do just a lot of damage. Marcus can punch your opponent in the face. You can hybrid for game. It's, it's all 
It's all sorts of nonsense, and you can use the hybrids to evolve into your other ultimates. Jet Selfie is obviously broken, but we do have to start talking about the Rise Greymons here. Four copies of the Rise Greymon from BT12, which involves three from Geo Greymon. So unfortunately on a hybrid it costs four. It feels bad, but sometimes you don't have a choice. It'll be okay. It is not the end of the world. When you're evolving, if you have a yellow or red tamer in play, gain a memory. So if you do evolve it on a Geo Grey, it does effectively cause two to evolve. On a yellow hybrid, it costs three. Just fine. It's not a big deal. And then all turns, once per turn. When one of your tamers is deleted, place one Marcus Damon from your trash on top of your security stack face down. Also, the inheritable is the same. All turns, once per turn. Now, why this is a good effect is because Marcus be punching people in the face. Sometimes he'll die to the security check. So having this puts Marcus right back into security. So it is a very, very important card to have, either there on as itself or in the stack. And a good follow-up to Rise Greymon is, of course, Rise Greymon X Antibody, which evolves for four regularly or evolves for one on a Rise Greymon. What this card does is when you play him, evolve him, sorry, you play a Tamer from your hand for free. Then if you evolve on a Rise Greymon, you do 2,000 DP damage for each of your yellow or red Tamers to an opponent's Dredgermon. So on evolution, it can randomly just snipe down something, which is pretty cool. And then your turn, 1,000 DP for uh, each tamer you have. Card's a powerhouse. It's a mini boss monster. And we need the mini boss monster, especially in this deck, because we're actually only playing two copies of Shine Greymon. Now, our other version plays more of this, but this Shine Greymon is indeed a boss monster. It evolves to four usually, but three with Rise Greymon in the name. So anything other than Jet Selfie is safe. When Dredge Evolving, you, for each other red tamer you have, you one of your opponent's Digimon and all your opponent's security Digimon get minus 3,000 DP for the turn. So you randomly snipe something when evolving, you're also, your opponent's security is also a whole lot weaker, so your Marcus's can survive checks. Oh, by the way, did we mention Marcus has security plus 1, 3,000 DP? Wild cards on the field? Pretty good card. So that's it for the Digimon. We'll move on to the Tamers, which is four copies of TK because your memory tamer, the fish stuff out of security. Really good card. Four copies of the main man Marcus. I'll talk about Marcus here now. So, cost 4 to play. Start a main phase. If you have Digimon, I'll go on a Greymon in its name and play. So, in the main battle area. By paying a memory, this becomes 3000 DP Digimon that can't Digivolve. That's fine. It can punch the opponent in the face, though. And that's pretty good. But it's even better than that. When it becomes suspended, which, by the way, you can do when you attack, one of your Digimon may Digivolve into a yellow card with Greymon in its name in your hand without paying the cost. So you can evolve a Rise Grey into a Shine Grey for free and immediately reap the benefits. Broken! This card's insane. We're going to go into more combo specific stuff with them later, but that card is absolutely absurd. It's the heart and soul of your deck. I mean that literally. And then we have four Tai Kari, because they do reduce your opponent's security to DP by 2,000, which is nice. And you get a memory if they threw us, and so and if you threw us as well. So that's pretty nice. We play one copy of TK and Izzy. Gain a memory if you have a level 5 or higher, same for your opponent, and then minus 1,000 something when you evolve. Extra DP damage, why not? And one copy of Zoe to randomly get a hybrid out of Tamer, or so, hybrid out of Security, is pretty good. Now we play three copies of Shining Blast. Five costs. You may play a Marcus Tamer from your hand without paying the cost. Then for each yellow red Tamer you have in play, three of your own Sedgemon get minus 2,000 for the turn. This card is a widespread removal bombshell. It's absolutely insane you play this card. Then to finish it up, one copy of Sunrise, one copy of Reinforced Memory Boost. And now let's go on to the red version before we talk about combos. Now we are moving on to the red base of Shine Greymon. I'm going to be real. While I like the yellow base, like personal preference, more, as I'm a yellow hybrid stan, I can probably say that the red base is objectively better right now. And that's all I'm going to say to it, because it's a little more coherent, consistent. A lot more Agumons and Greymons, deck seems more on theme, it's doing all sorts of stuff. It's not just extra hybrids for game and stuff like that. So anyway, let's move on now. We have four copies of the Draw Coromon from BT5, which is a draw card. We do not need BT9 Coromon for the 1000 boost in this particular Greymon stack deck, because your opponent's security gets kind of squishy, as you may have noticed already. So there's no point in having that. Let's just have cards that help us unbrick and draw better cards, and I'm a big fan of that. And we do play four copies of the BT12 Agumon again, because we have to, and that's where everything 
changes, because we're playing different rookies now. Red rookies, like four copies of Agumon X Antibody from 189. Did you guys know that Agumon X Antibody has Agumon in this name as a dinosaur? That seems pretty important for Geo Greymon. So Agumon X is just a shoe, and so many Greymon cards to add to your hand. Can't add an Antibody to your hand, but that's fine. Not a big deal. We also play two copies of the Agumon from Star Deck 7. The one that gives you 2,000 DP when attacking. That's pretty good, attacking a player in be specific. Why is this card so good? Because the dinosaur. Yeah, that's right. It's good to have dinosaurs for that Geo Greymon. So we're playing two copies of it. The last Agumon we're playing is actually not a dinosaur, but it is two copies of BT12 Agumon, the black red one. The one that adds a Greymon card and a tie. Because as you guys know, we do play ties in our deck, technically. So adding the tie and Kari to your hand, or even regular tie to me if you're playing this deck, can be useful. And they all turn 1000 DP. Ain't bad. Now we're going to the champions, and the only similar champion from last time are the four Geo Greymons, because playing Marcus for free is pretty good, and the Minus Thousand Inheritable is pretty okay. And the only time it evolves for three is on BT12 Agumon. Besides that, it's two cost, and that's fine. Now onto some red champions. What I love in this deck, and not everyone is on the same boat, but I think it's necessary because, you know, Rise Greymon is your ultimate, basically. We're playing four copies of this, the uh, Security Geo Greymon. The one that, when it comes out of security, deletes something for on DP or less. Now, it can be a random surprise, you know what I mean? Uh, and pop something for thousand or less out of security. An extra little aggressive option to push for game even. But it is a Geo Greymon. And that is why I'm playing four copies of it, above all. Um, the rest of the Geo Greymons we have right now aren't that good. This all changes, though, with EX4 and BT13. We're only playing this Geo Greymon for now. Then we play a whole bunch of one of champions, three to be specific. We play one copy of BT5 Greymon. We do it because of one cost evolution. The 2000 is nice, it's not necessary, but the one cost evolution does come up sometimes. You're going to be doing different evolution math because there's so many different combinations of evolution stacks in this deck that the math, you know, you might need the math. And that's all I could say to that right now. We're playing one copy of BT12 Greymon because there's a little bit of flex, a little bit of wiggle room in this deck. And sometimes you can evolve that and play a tie for free in your Shine Greymon Marcus deck. And it gets good value. So uh, why not? Why not take advantage of it? It You never, I hardly ever get it off, to be honest, but it's there. It's fine. And it evolves for two on an Agumon, which all you guys are Agumons, and that's okay. The last champion we play is actually one copy of Greymon X Antibody. Now, some people might wonder, well, there's no X Antibody cards, why do you, why, why you do it? No. See? Okay. Here, here's why we're playing this card. Because when this card evolves into a Greymon, you reduce the cost by one for each color. Each of each colors. So let's talk about our ultimates for a second, like the four Rise Greymon, right? So... While Rise Greymon usually gets reduced by evolving for 3 on a Geo Grey, if you evolve a Rise Grey on this in the battle area, it costs 2 to evolve. Then you gain 1 back if you have Marcus. So effectively, it's a 1 cost evolution. Just like when you use this with Metal Greymon in BT12. That's why we play the Greymon X, the 1 copy of it. Does it come up? Yeah, not often because it's limited. But it does make for a really cheap ultimate. And that's pretty cool. So we do play the 1 copy of it. But yes, on the ultimates now, I already spoiled some of the sauce. This is the same. It's four Rise Greymons, the one that, you know, lets you play your Marcus back if your Tamer dies. And then we have four copies of Rise Grey X. Rise Grey X is just one of those really good cards that plays Tamers, blows things up, whatever. We do play, actually, a ninth ultimate. We do. It's a very limited use one. It's the original Rise Greymon. The one that plays a yellow tamer when you evolve it. And it gives you security plus one of the three more tamers. Uh, three more yellow tamers, specifically. So, this is a flex spot. You can do whatever you want with this random ninth spot. This only evolves on the BT12 Geo Greymon. It evolves on nothing else. Which is why I'm playing one copy of it only. And it only plays uh, Marcus or Tai Kami, Tai Kari. It only gets value for security if you have Marcus's and Tainkari's. So it's very conditional. It's a tech card. And I like it when it comes up, because it randomly lets you steal games here and there. So it's up to you if you actually want to take this card seriously or not. 
Uh, complete personal preference. I like it when it comes up, you know, one out of ten games. If you don't want to play it, play something else. No one is going to, you know, criticize you for doing so. The last Digimons, Digimon, Digimons, uh, four shiny Greymons. We're doing four because we have room. And this Greymon version is more oriented around your Greymon stack. So why not play four copies of Shine Greymon to get your consistent effects going, give you maximum chance to get your Marcus going, hitting really hard. That's why I play four copies of it. And really nothing else to say to that. No other ultimates, no other megas. We don't play other Shine Greymons. The rest are kind of bad. This, this is fine. It's really cool. Marcus for game is pretty nice. On the Tamers here, we still do four copies of Marcus. Obviously, it's still your bread and your butter. We now have gone down to three copies of Tai and Kari. Um, it's not a hybrid deck. You don't need four, but I think three is fine. Uh, three allows you to get extra number here and there. And that's not a bad thing. Uh, it's fine. Okay, she play for free, which is really cool, but nothing, nothing to create there. We do play one copy of Marcus Damon, the original memory tamer, Marcus Damon. The one that says if you attack with a gray mon, suspending it in memory. That seems pretty cool. Um, it's there as a memory tamer that randomly gets your memory sometimes. And that's fine. You can also search it with the Agumon BT12 and play for free with the Geogray BT12. If you don't have Marcus on field already. So why not include a copy of it? And our last tamer. This one seems like a bit of a stretch. But one copy of OG Tai Kamiya. Yeah, you could play for free. You can do that. But it lets you hit for security plus one. Where in this deck, it's a little more, more aggressive than the yellow hybrid version. And you can actually take advantage of the security plus one really easily. Like, your opponent's security is as flimsy as tinfoil. You know what I mean? You're going to have no problem hitting through it. Unless it's like a, you know, a rival's barrage or something like that. So, the tie for the extra security attack comes up. It's a good card. I don't have anything else to say about it. And the options are exactly the same across both variants. The three Shining Blast, the one Sunrise Buster, which is the better one, and a Reinforcing Memory Boost uh, for the extra memory gain and for the adding a card to your hand and a card to security. Pretty good card. Now let's go into some specifics about some certain cards and some strategies. All right, for starters, we're going to showcase the power of Marcus. Marcus, the big man, the monster himself. Let's say the opponent puts us at one memory because they are impolite and they are very rude people. Whatever, we'll, we'll promote our stack. We do have a card with Greymon, so we can use Marcus here to bring this up as a Digimon by paying a memory. Now we're at zero. Okay. For the sake of this first example, we're going to assume that your stack is literally just this and nothing else. That's fine. So if you swing with Marcus here, you can use Marcus' effect to evolve into a yellow for free. And when you do it that way, there are three like options, right? which Rise Greymon is best. Uh, obviously the correct answer is this one. You can evolve into this one. Let's say you draw a card. Because if you do that, you actually get a memory back by its effect. So you do get a memory from the, idea, the whole ordeal. And if it dies, it goes to security. Just like that. Because it's this Rise Greymon. So I do think that this one is definitely the most valuable one. Um, if you have alternative options, like this one I'd say is second best. Because you, just, you can play a tamer when you do that. And then same with this one. You can also just play a tamer. But it has no inheritable. So if you go... And you also can't go Rise Grey X over Rise Grey X. So I do think that's the worst one for the job. But those are your three options with Marcus. Assuming that you are just like an ultimate. A, a champion with the turn starts. Nothing else. Now for example's sake. Let's say that the turn is the same. We're choked at one. Because our opponent is very rude. Um, and we have Rise Grey Mon this time in the back. Not Grey Mon. That's fine. We can bring out Marcus by paying a memory. So we can swing with Marcus here. Uh, no matter what we evolve into, thankfully, it keeps the Rise Greymon inheritable. So that if it dies, it comes back to security. So that's really good. Also, don't forget that minus 2,000 security for each of these inheritables too, because we just haven't had those ones there. So 4,000 DP, the minus on swing is really cool. However, you have two options here with the Marcus, right? You can go into Rise Grey X for free. Which may or may not be what you want to do. You could play a Tamer, DP, reduce some of them stuff some more. That's up to you if you want to do that. But the better option here, usually, is just Shine Greymon for free. When you evolve in the Shine Greymon for free, uh, first of all, you're blowing something up, probably. Or, or making the security extra soft. And then this Marcus, all of a sudden, is now hitting for an extra 3,000 and security plus one. So going into Shine Greymon, 
which is, you know, the Ace of Marcus, allows you to hit an extra security, basically, assuming it survives the first check. And of course, if it doesn't survive the first check, it goes to security anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, and that's everything you know with Marcus. It's an incredibly powerful tamer that does what nothing he's done before in the Dawn TCG, and lets you attack players. And you get really cool benefits by doing that, to be honest. So that's just the main marker strategy of the deck. A couple other things to mention. One of the cool things about Shine Greymon is that it's one of the best DP reduction decks in Digimon's history, maybe even the best DP reduction based deck in Digimon history. It has a lot of cool toys to delete DP. And one of those new toys that got introduced in BT12 is Shining Blast. Now, I want to read this card. I want to thoroughly read this card so you guys understand how bonkers this card is. So first of all, you pay five for it. You can play Marcus from your hand without paying the cost. Okay, we'll play Marcus. You pay five. All right, cool. We have three tamers on the board now. Then, for each yellow and or red tamer you have in play, for each one... Three your opponent's Digimon get minus 2,000 for the turn. So, this tamer is three opponent's Digimon get minus 2,000. This tamer is three Digimon gets minus 2,000. And this tamer is three Digimon get minus 2,000 for each tamer. Uh, sorry. For each tamer only. So, here's the, here's the thing with Shining Blast, right? It can be used as a pseudo weaker form of um, board removal. A little bit widespread... Um, you know, here and there can blow up some smaller things. Um, I've had opportunities where, in tandem, things like Shine Greymon plus Shining Blast can blow up Examon boards. You can do all sorts of fun stuff. So, it's a card that allows you to do additional DP math. That's why I play three copies of it. This card's actually just really, really, really neat. I wish it snowballed went exponential, but unfortunately, we are not that lucky with the card. It's just... You know, 2,000, 2,000, 2,000. So, so depending on how many tamers you have on board, which is why I like the hybrid version, personally, because you have so many tamers on board, the Shining Blast just does obscene damage to Digimon. The Shining Blast just could freaking board clear. It, it, the card's actually absurd. It really is nuts. And I recommend people give it a try. And between this and your other DP reduction math and other cards that do DP reduction, you know what I mean? Like, like the whole deck can just eliminate boards on one turn. The The strat for Marcus for game is a cool strat that the deck has, but it's not its only strat. Now finally I'm going to show you guys how nutty this deck can actually get. This is the whole purpose of the deck, this is what the deck is designed to do. Let's say you have Rise Grey coming up in the back, and you have freaking three Marcus on board Memory Tamer. Well what you can do is do this, wow, go to zero, okay. All of a sudden you have a Rise Grey on and three Marcuses. Now, if you swing with one, if you've already done a damage to your opponent, you just evolve, you swing, you evolve into this for free, you draw off revolution, I guess, and then all of a sudden, three, six, nine, twelve thousand DP damage to your opponent's Digimon and their security Digimon. Your Marcuses aren't dying to Digimon. So this Marcus goes in, this Marcus goes in, this Marcus for game. And if you haven't done any DP 